Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So it's been a long time, not really, it's been like a few months I believe and uh, I just started college three weeks ago. I've been meaning to update you guys on that. I've had a few requests to make more videos more frequently so I think I'm going to try to do that but I don't like know exactly what to talk about so often because like I'm still like a normal person but like I just have some chronic illnesses going along with me. So my first week of school was the absolute worst. So I actually got a wheelchair, uh, which I haven't told you guys about unless you're following my Chronically Izzy Instagram. But I, yes, I got a motorized wheelchair and I used it the three out of four of my classes on Monday, that Monday of three weeks ago. And like everything was going fine and dandy until my battery started to fail really bad. I was in my dorm and I was going down to my last class and right as soon as I got outside, it started going at a snail's pace and the alarm started going off and something was wrong. So I had to slowly ride it back up and I was gonna be early for my class, but because of this mishap, plus I didn't know where the class was because I had never been there yet, I was like 15 minutes late to my class, but I did it and I was able to walk there and it was hell. I couldn't really sleep that night because of the pain, but I did it. And then the next day I still didn't have the wheelchair. I thought maybe because it was snowing, it just needed to dry off and like that would solve the problem. And it did the same exact thing right before my first class. So I had to walk to all my classes that day. There were three classes that day. That was horrible. Luckily it was raining, sounds weird, right? But it masked my tears, so no one could see. You know, it just looked like I was like, had rain on my face. On Wednesday, I walked to my first class. Then I found that Disability Support Services here at camp on campus does medical transport. So I called them and they usually, you have to tell them 24 hours in advance, but the, I told them my situation, how my wheelchair broke. I tried walking my classes, it was really hard. And they didn't know what to do. And I told them like, could you at least drive me today, which was Wednesday, to my furthest class. And they were able to make the exception. And that was really nice. Um, and then I had to walk to the other three classes. There was one in the morning that one and then two more classes after that. So I had to walk to three classes that day. And then on Thursday or on Wednesday night, I wrote the schedule for Thursday. Like they want, like they have a special format. So I wrote it and I wrote it for Friday. So I've had medical transport ever since then, which has been a lifesaver, honestly. I thought I, when my wheelchair broke and I was walking to my classes, I was like, I can't do this. I'm gonna have to drop out, but Number one, I showed myself that I, I can push myself to do some things. Even if it hurts, I have to pay for it later. It's just not the best thing for me because then I can't concentrate in school while I'm doing that. So like I could work on my pain, which is like the treatment, which I've said multiple times before, is to increase exercise. But the problem is now I'm in school that I can't really do that without taking away from the amount of education I'm getting because I'll be so focused on the pain without trying but it would just be so bad that I won't be able to focus. My next week of school went pretty smoothly. Um, the one thing that sucks which is really not that bad is that you have to get you have to be outside waiting for them 30 minutes before they your class starts so they can pick you up 30 minutes before so then you're waiting but I mean, it's not that bad. And one time last week, they um, forgot to pick me up. So yeah, that kind of sucked. This past week, pain-wise, has been okay. So this is something, let's move on to a new topic, which is really, really hard for me to talk about. And it's gonna be so hard for me to click that post button, but it needs to be talked about. Mental health is a big problem, especially with chronic pain and chronic illness patients. It's more prevalent with them 
and specifically one of the like the main um, issues are depression, anxiety, and for my amps, it's actually anorexia or eating disorder. The reason depression starts with chronic illnesses is because you feel so hopeless, you feel like you can't stop this chronic illness, and there's so many things that come along with chronic illnesses that just take away from your experience in life that other people have, that it's, um, it just, it really takes away your energy both physically and mentally and you're pretty much left to just deal with it on your own even if you have support rare chronic illnesses most people don't meet people in real life or at least only meet like a couple people in real life who have these illnesses that you have so you feel very lonely anxiety is caused because you have all this pain and you don't know when it's gonna come or when the next flare-up is gonna be with your chronic illness and it just it's overwhelming to not know things like that that could interfere with your life every single day so I think that's the main reason that a lot of people with anxiety and chronic illnesses have these like interlinked and then eating disorders is because you feel you feel like you're out of control with your environment like with your chronic pain and chronic illnesses that you don't know like what to do like you can't control that you can't control many things and many people who don't have an eating disorder don't know this but eating disorders are not mainly because of weight they are not because i mean don't get me wrong part of it is body image and like over time it can turn into like more of a body image thing than than a control thing but it is more of a control thing because you can't control your outside environment so you but you can control what or what you don't put into your body so that's why eating disorders are prevalent in specifically amps i don't know about other chronic illnesses but that's something they taught us in the program so why am i telling you all this there's a couple reasons one reason is because this is not very known that these are interlinked people like just think oh well i have chronic illness but i also have like depression anxiety eating disorder or other mental illnesses they don't know that they're interlinked and that they like affect one another but they do and it's very important to know this because when you're like in therapy or seeing a doctor they know not to just target each one individually but that you can like bring them together so you know like oh okay well my pain was really bad and then that day my anxiety was also really bad and it's not because like it was just random it's because your pain was bad that your anxiety got bad or vice versa for some people the second reason i'm telling you guys all this is because i have mentioned it like slightly in some of my other videos but i too struggle with these problems um pretty bad um I'm currently getting lots of therapy. I see this is really weird. Um, comment below if you have this too because I've never heard of anyone having this. But I have two different therapists. Uh, one I see once a week and the, next, and the other one I'm seeing twice a week starting next week. Which is what we used to do and then I started getting better so then we cut it back. But now it's like starting to get worse so we have to like bring her back in more than once. But my one therapist that I see once a week focuses more on my anxiety and depression while the other one focuses on my eating disorder. And even though I hate this, I absolutely hate when people are like, oh, you're not thin right now, you don't have an eating disorder, or it can't be that bad. Because weight is not the number one factor that, in, like, that shows if someone has an eating disorder or explains like how bad the eating disorder is. So please... Do not think that because you're at X amount of weight and you're in X amount of BMI scale, which is complete shit, <laughs> um, that you're invalidated because everyone deserves validation. I'm not gonna like mention, I don't think I've mentioned in my other videos what type of eating disorder I have. It's not important, it's not important about my weight because those things are for me to know and only me and my medical professionals.
but even them like I don't tell them my weight because I don't think it's important it doesn't make a difference in like how severe or not severe my eating disorder is let's move on to anxiety so anxiety has been bad for me throughout the years it I've had it ever since I was younger and then over the years it started to get worse I'd say probably when everything else started going downhill when my grandfather passed away back in 2014 which was just the turning point in my life in a bad way and ever since starting college it's been really bad it's been like a really bad roller coaster of emotions like I I have both generalized and social anxiety and so generalized is more like when it's not really caused by anything it's just more more random than social anxiety where social anxiety like the title states is like based on social encounters so if you have to go out in public or be seen by people it just like kind of there's different triggers for everyone but like being in public is I mean just thing for me but being with friends is like easier so if I'm out in public with friends it's easier than just being out in public by myself so I've that along with my depression has caused me to be in my room I'd say 100% of the time other than when I um, go to classes uh, the reason I'm telling you guys this is because this is my place to both journal like what I go through and be honest and real with you guys like my therapist said it's a an expression of art in a way because it's kind of like journaling like I could journal and write down my feelings but I choose to say them in a YouTube video uh, for multiple reasons mainly so that if you guys are going through this I can sort of show you guys that you aren't alone and that many people do go through this so I know this video wasn't very positive but it's not really that it was negative either it can be seen as negative because we're talking about some stuff that just seems so like down and like um, upsetting and it's just not nice it's not a fun topic but it's, it's what a lot of people go through and we have to cut the stigma that like you shouldn't talk about these things because like x y and z this video was really hard to film, took lots of breaks in between to um, get my, my senses together, but I hope that this helps somebody. Uh, like always, feel free to email me or Instagram message or follow me on Instagram. I respond more on Instagram than I do my email, but I try to respond on email. YouTube messages, uh, I've been having lots of problems with them. I usually don't get a message about them like 95% of the time so I have to like go through manually and check all my I don't even know how many videos I have like 50 and that that is really hard sometimes so if you message I will on YouTube I will try to get back to you as soon as possible email me I'll get back to you as soon as possible Instagram me and I'll probably get back to you like that day or the next day. My email is gonna be, and my email and my Instagram are gonna be in the description box below, but my email is izzyrose18 at aol.com and my Instagram is chronicallyizzy. So if you guys wanna check me out, <laughs> if you guys want to check me out you can check me out there um thank you guys for watching please give me suggestions like in any of those m media form platforms of how you like videos you want to see i know this was like a main one i think like a lot of people would probably want to know about like how you go to college with a chronic illness um and i probably will be more in depth in my next if i make another follow-up video about college because this one was more about like mental illnesses than how my how you deal with college it was more about my experience in college not just like how you should deal with it but um i really hope that you guys learned or got help somehow some way in my video and i will see you guys next time bye